So the point of today's video is to educate anybody on the basics of Tesla Solar Roof. This is a premium product that kind of skirted under the mainstream media's eye. Uh, so a lot of people know that it exists, but they may not know all of the details. This is not commonplace information. So Dave, let's start at the top with what is the product? What is Tesla Solar Roof? Tesla Solar Roof can be defined as a beautifully integrated solar roofing product. And what that means is it's both a roof that serves the functionality of keeping the water out of the house. And on top of that, it produces clean electricity. So it serves as, you know, the function of traditional solar panels and also traditional roofing materials combined. How on earth does the Tesla solar roof work? The Tesla solar roof, like we said, is beautifully integrated solar into a roofing system. It produces clean electricity from the active tiles in the roof system. That clean electricity is in the form of direct current. It gets run through wires, down through conduit, into the inverter, and the inverter takes that direct current, turns it into alternating current, which the house uses. Then that goes into the panel and out to the various breakers and appliances, outlets, switches, everything the house uses for electricity. If you have a battery, any production over top of the consumption will go into the battery and then it will store that battery for use later on. And in a nutshell, it's just, it functions just like solar panels do, you know, except it's just beautifully integrated into the roofing system. So you can't tell what's solar and what's roof. Now, other solar roofing products, you can tell where the solar begins and ends and then where the roofing materials connect to the solar shingles or solar tiles. So it's very unique because most people that look at it, they say, what is that product? Is it slate? Is it tile? It looks like glass. Well, it is glass, but some of the tiles inside of that roofing system are actually actively producing clean electricity. Is a solar roof array going to produce or can it produce as much or more than a solar panel field, a layout? Long story short, solar panels can produce more than solar roof on a per square foot basis. It just depends on how much roof space you have. So if you have a perfect rectangle facing south and it can fit, you know, 25 solar panels on it that are producing, you know, 410 watts, then you're probably gonna have more production than a solar roof in that situation. But where the solar roof shines is the ability to go around obstructions, go up valleys, go down hips, work around dormers, you can actually fit more solar roof tiles on a roof that's complex compared to solar panels. Not to mention it looks so much better. You know, have you ever seen a very complicated cut up roof with solar panels on it? Kind of looks awful. It doesn't look aesthetically pleasing. Whereas a solar roof, you can't tell again, what's solar and what's the roof. And you're t able to take those smaller tiles and work with them a lot easier because of the space constraints. So yes, you can you can produce more from the panels, but not in all situations, and you do have the aesthetics at play. And this is something that I see a lot of panel companies not doing is relocating obstructions. So one thing that we do is we relocate obstructions if we can in the attic. So if we have an obstruction on a south-facing mounting plane, We'd like to relocate that pipe to a north-facing mounting plane if possible. A lot of people don't do that because it requires a certain skill set, and a lot of people don't have those resources in-house. We do. So we want to move pipes if we can so that we maximize production. Uh, you've probably seen these houses with panels on them where you have a three-inch pipe sticking through the roof, and this otherwise beautiful rectangle array of panels is missing one or two panels throughout the array because there's pipes sticking through the roof. Mm -hmm. All they had to do was relocate those pipes to a different part of the roof where the panels aren't, and they would have had a beautiful rectangle instead of, you know, a rectangle with missing teeth, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where even if you keep those pipes there, you can work around them a lot easier with solar roofing tiles because they're smaller as opposed to deleting a whole entire roughly three foot by five foot solar panel. You're losing out on a lot of production in that case. So is the roof 100% glass? Is it glass from edge to edge on the roof? 
No, it's not 100% glass. It's a combination of glass and metal. You know, the roofing material will vary depending on how many different roof features exist on that particular home. So like valleys, hips, ridges, walls, eaves, obstructions, all those good things, they get metal around them, metal flashing. You know, and that's typically installed on, on normal roofing material as well. The rest of the roof is glass, but from the ground, everything is seamless, integrated, can't tell what's active, what's inactive. Uh, so what is the scenario if glass tiles break? How fragile are these tiles? And if one does end up breaking, one, am I going to be okay? Is my family going to be okay if it falls from the roof? And two, how do we replace it? So the glass tiles are made with tempered glass, very strong, right? Very strong compression strength. The edge of the tile can be damaged, and that can cause the entire tile to crack. You know, when tempered glass gets damaged, it splits apart into a million pieces. But there's a backer on the underside of the tiles so that if something does crack, everything remains up on the roof. You simply just swap that tile out. It's not really a big deal. Those tiles should not break during the normal you know, wear and tear of the roof system. You know, they can be damaged during the course of installation. They can be damaged by a tree, you know, or something hitting them down the road. But looking up at the roof, those tiles just shouldn't spontaneously, you know, break. You know, they went through hurricanes down in Florida. They have gone through hail in Texas. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, it has a sufficient hail warranty, sufficient wind warranty. And the system itself, when you, you know, actually work with it, you know, you can tell how durable it is. You know, it's made of tempered glass. The metals are, are 26 gauge galvalume, right? It's a really heavy, thick metal. And when you install the tiles themselves to the roof deck, just moving them with your hand, you can tell it would take a tremendous amount of wind for anything to lift up on this roof. I mean, it's not going anywhere once it's put down properly. Yeah, this is a very secure product. Absolutely. But if God forbid something does happen, you can swap them in and out. It's not a big deal. There's a lot going on up here, but because they're glass tiles, they're not going to adhere to the roof like a traditional tile or panel would. So how are you securing these tiles to the roof? So the tiles stick up off the roof about an inch and a quarter or so, and the tiles themselves have feet which get nailed to the roof deck so these feet keep the tile elevated off the roof deck and there's a space between the glass tile and the underlayment that is on top of the roof deck you know plywood uh, plank boards whatever that roof deck is and that that gap is designed so that air can ventilate under the system so that it doesn't get too hot there's a starter bar at the bottom of the roof, which allows air to enter underneath the tiles. It travels upwards towards the peak of the roof, the ridge, which also has a vent for the exhaust. And that serves two functions. It serves as a vent for the actual roofing system to take heat that's being produced underneath the tiles and remove it. And it also ventilates the attic. It's an exhaust form of ventilation for the attic itself. It's a continuous passive exhaust vent for the attic, which takes the air out of the attic and through the bridge vent so that air can circulate both under the tiles and in the attic properly. So what, you know, should we be concerned about water or ice accumulating under there? So water will get underneath the tiles in certain situations, wind driven rain, Snow and ice can build up and travel underneath. It shouldn't get into the peak of the roof where it's cut open, right? That's protected. That's engineered properly so that no wind-driven rain or snow or ice can get into the actual attic itself. But the roof system is designed to be water shedding. It's designed to take the water that falls on it, get it off the roof and into the gutters. But much like traditional Spanish barrel tiles or even slate or some other products out there, a lot of those products are designed to be water shedding. What really keeps it waterproof is the underlayment, which is underneath of the roofing material itself. Okay, so I sign on for a Tesla solar roof. From day one of getting a virtual estimate and speaking with a salesperson until the day where I have a solar roof on my house, Roughly, how long is that process going to take? There's a lot of variables that go into that. Typically, what we see is within four to six months, 
of contract signing, the job being produced and commissioned, meaning turned on, a lot of that depends on the homeowner, how easy it is to work through the processes, you know, because we do have to work together, you know, to make sure that this dream becomes a reality. And then we're also dealing with other third parties like utility companies and AHJs, authority having jurisdictions, aka permit offices. So a lot of it's outside of outside of our control based on the time frame. Uh, what we can control is, you know, we have a lot of control over the design because Tesla helps us with the design so we can work closely with them to make sure that we get the permit package that we can submit to the authority having jurisdiction, the permit office, and then also the utility company for interconnection. So we have a lot of control early on on making sure that we get the right paperwork and then we submit that paperwork. After we submit that paperwork, then it's in the hands of the utility companies and the permit offices. And sometimes the utility companies will take a couple of weeks to review. Sometimes it'll take them a month, depending on how backed up they are. Uh, we do have good relationships with all of our partners and vendors. It just depends on how backed up they are. And of course, the permit offices, they vary as well. You know, some counties, the, it'll be a couple of weeks. Some counties, it'll be four to six weeks. Uh, the things that we can control, we try to be as efficient as possible. Early on, so even before contract signing, a lot of thought and research and back and forth goes on to make sure that the homeowner has the right design. The system is designed to their budget and to their roof space. Those two factors will determine how much solar we can actually put up on that house and how big that system size is. We use technology like Eagle View for the aerial reports and imagery. So up front, we get an idea based on those measurements, how much space we're working with. But unfortunately, there is a degree of inaccuracy with those reports. You know, they're not 100%, even if they're 99.9%, .9%, depending on how large that roof is or how complex and cut up it is, we have to go out and do a site survey. And once we do a site survey and actually go physically to the, to the site, and take measurements, look into the attic, make sure that we understand and have more information than we initially made the assumptions on, then we do what's called a true up. And the true up is taking the assumptions we made based on technology, based on the aerial imagery and the reports, the measurement reports. We compare our actual readings on site, our actual measurements, our actual photographs, our actual on-site inspection and gathering of information compared to the assumptions we made. And then we do the true up. The true up could be uh, very little or it could be a lot. You know, sometimes we get into somebody's attic and we realize it's not properly ventilated. They have obstructions that aren't going through the roof. They're just dumped into the attic, like their bath fans, which can lead to problems with moisture and mold and that type of stuff. So we want to make sure everything's ventilated properly. We, we want to make sure that we're doing the job right because we expect this, this system to last many, many, many years. The warranty is 25 years, but we expect it to last longer than that. So we want to make sure that everything is documented and we build the roof right from the start. We can ask the homeowner to get involved. That's always helpful. If the homeowner can share as much information as possible, uh, as early as possible, it's great, you know, because sometimes we're working with a homeowner that's a few hours away from home base and we want to help them. And if they can take pictures of their electric meter, their electric panels up close, far away, general site pictures and conditions, if they're willing and able to get into their attic, that's great too. But if the homeowner can provide as much information as possible to us during the estimating phase, that true up tends to be minimized as far as costs are concerned. So there's always, you know, some sort of contingency built in just in case we do find some unexpected, unforeseen things. Again, we need to do the job properly. We need to replace wood that's rotten. If there's too much deflection between the trusses or the rafters, then we need to shore them up. None of us have x-ray vision. We can't see through the shingles or what material on the roof currently is there. So we don't know what we're going to find 100% until we tear everything off. But again, it just depends on getting that information and trying to make it as accurate as possible. We need to take our time early on. So that process can be, it can be weeks or months in some cases, depending on you know, back and forth with the homeowner, how responsive they are. Uh, we try to be as responsive as we can. We try to be as detailed and thorough as we can early on so that once we go out and do the site survey, 
that true up is as minimal as possible because we don't want there to be any surprises. You know, it's not a bait and switch endeavor. So once all of the pre-planning is done and solidified and the crews are scheduled to come out to my house, how roughly how long does it take to actually put the tiles up? So on average, I would say give us two weeks. That'll help with any weather delays, any material issues we, we run into. But two weeks of time frame is typically enough. It could be, you know, it could be one week. Um, but I, I always like to tell people on average, two weeks to install the roof. These days we'd like to run the conduit and do some other things in the attic if possible so that the electrical is kind of working in conjunction with the roof process. If we have to relocate pipes, we do that when the roof's removed. It's really easy to relocate a pipe when you tear off the roof and you just pop out a few sheets of plywood as opposed to crawling in the attic and then having to relocate that pipe when the roof's already on the house. It's totally different. So when we get there, we tear off the roof down to the bare plywood. We inspect the plywood, make sure everything's good to install. We check the fascia boards, the rake boards, all the wood around the house. And then if we're relocating pipes, we remove a few sheets of plywood to relocate those pipes quickly and efficiently. We install the plywood. We cut out around the obstructions. We install the underlayments. And then we start installing the actual roof tiles themselves, the perimeter metals and all that stuff. So that's why I say give us two weeks because it just depends on what all is involved with that project, how cut up it is. And we tend to bring out more guys depending on the complexity of the job and the size of the job and the steepness of the job. So we try to make sure that we're getting the roof installed as quickly as possible. One thing's for certain, we try to get everything torn off and dried in as soon as possible because that underlayment is actually the weatherproofing of the roof system. So as long as we tear everything off and get the underlayment installed properly, that roof is weather tight. And that underlayment can be on that roof for 120 days exposed to the sun and the harmful UV rays. When we're working with a new construction project, a builder, once the roof is ready, they want to get it dried in as soon as possible. So we usually go out, we usually install our edge metals, we usually install our underlayment, and sometimes that project sits for a few months before we go back out to install the tiles because we may need to wait for... Um, the stucco contractor to come out and do his work, the masons, the siding guys, any, anyone that's going to potentially damage the roof, we want to make sure that they're over and done with so that when we go out and install the glass roof, the solar roof, there's going to be nobody else that's going to have to walk around and potentially damage our work. You know, So it's a little bit of a different process when we're dealing with new construction versus retrofit or remodeling. Thanks for tuning in to our latest video. We hope you found it helpful and informative, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you want to continue learning about Tesla solar roof with us, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for the channel. That way you'll never miss the latest video in the series. And if you have any questions or comments, we want to hear from you. You can drop them down below in the comments section, or you can contact us at AmericanHomeContractors.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.